So is, is Jack with us? Not yet. Not yet. He's up for a minute. So um, uh, if he's not, then Janet, um, you're on deck. So um, maybe. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so unless Jack shows up in the next 30 seconds or so, maybe if you if you're prepared to take minutes today and then we'll have Jack do it next time. Okay. I'm going to have trouble taking minutes during the work plan, but I could go back or something. So, yeah. Okay. Other than that, Stephanie, are we ready to get going? I think, yep. We're, we are recording now and we have a quorum. So, you're all set. Great. Okay. Well, welcome, everybody, and thanks for joining us uh, for the um, August 31st, 2022 meeting mm -hmm. of the uh, solar bylaw working group for the town of Amherst. Um, and um, uh, appreciate everybody <laughs> being here um, and uh, and for the public that's um, uh, listening in as well. And we'll have opportunity for public comment um, at the end. Um, so we have the agenda that's been sent around. Um, uh, let me just see if we're we're missing jack are we missing anybody else from the committee no uh, you have everybody else great okay thanks um all right great so um i guess the first order of business is to review uh and then uh, vote on the minutes from our last meeting on 8 11. um these were in your packet with a number of other uh pieces of material um and um let me open up the floor for any comments or proposed changes to the minutes as they've been presumably respectfully submitted by Martha. <laughs> um, I can. Do you want yeah, me is to it helpful to uh, I'm not sure if people have um, reviewed the minutes prior or whether it's helpful to um, put them on the screen and scroll through them uh, if if um, if people have had a chance to review them and have no comments that's great uh, but if people would like to um, have the opportunity to review them uh, just scroll through them uh, on the screen then Stephanie can do that um, so anybody would find that helpful I'm seeing seeing not. Um, so okay. I, I read the minutes already, but yeah, is, have other people? Do they need to read them right now? Um, I've reviewed them. Uh, so, uh, Chris, I just wanted to say that I thought they were done really well. Having been a minute taker previously, Martha did a great job. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, should we amend them uh, technically, uh, Stephanie or Chris, to, to say that they were taken by uh, Martha? I can add that. I yeah, can add okay. that to the I, end. I think it's 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 yeah. helpful. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So I, I I I don't know if we need to vote on that amendment, <laughs> but we'll just go with that one. Um, so uh, assuming there's no uh, additional uh, or, or comments or suggestions for edits on the minutes. Uh, can I hear a motion to accept the minutes as they've been provided and amended only by adding Martha's name as the respectfully submitter, respectful submit, respect, <laughs> submitter with respect. <laughs> <Don't move. laughs> I'll second. Great. Okay, and I'll have to um, do this by voice vote. So, Brooks? Yes. Breger? Yes. McGowan? Yes. Tanner? Yes. Corcoran? Yes. Pagliarulo? She's on mute. Can I, can, can I, can I vote um, if I can, wasn't in the meeting? If you review them or you watch the meeting? Yes, yes. I reviewed them, yes, yes. Can I, I, I forgot that I'm taking minutes. Who did the motion to approve the minutes? Oh, Robert, okay, thank you. <laughs> and Janet, I, I'm, I've got you covered too. I'm doing backup here. Okay. So, okay, so the minutes are approved. 
Great. Okay, so um, going on to the next agenda item is staff updates. Um, so let's hear first from from Stephanie if that works, and then and then from um, Chris. Sure. Um, so a really quick um, update on the solar assessment that we received one response, one proposal, um, and. Wayne, Dwayne and I are going to review that tomorrow and see if we think that that does actually meet the um, requ requirements in the proposal for an adequate submission. Um, if it does not, then there is the potential to open it up again and we will do outreach to, or I especially will do outreach to other consultants who did not submit a proposal to find out why they did not submit those that we think were likely candidates, one of which would be the one doing the statewide assessment, um, and then revise the proposal and resubmit again to, um, or post it again for submissions. So um, that would that would certainly affect a timeline, but if we think that it's lacking in its response, I don't think we want to just go with just one only because it's the one that was submitted. We really want to make sure that we're going to get an adequate assessment. So, um, I don't think, even though the um, even though the uh, town council had submitted a, a deadline with which to receive the solar bylaw, um, it is possible that it could be extended, given this revision to the timeline. So just just a heads up about that. Um, and I would say that's my only update for today. So I will hand it over to Chris. Well, why don't we, um, there are a couple of questions. Um, okay. I think that relate to, to that update, I, I would presume. So I think Martha was first and then Jack. Yeah, yeah. is is this the time you want to, I, I saw that the solar assessment update was down later in the agenda, but if you want to just Take care of it now. I had one comment to make. Do you want me to go ahead or um, or wait? I don't know if it has to do with the content of the assessment. Maybe we'll wait on that. If it has to do okay. with the pr yeah. procedure okay. of of procuring the the um, the uh, a, a contractor, then maybe it's appropriate now. Yeah. Okay. I'll wait. Okay. Great. Oh, and, and um, let me just confirm. Jack, um, uh, welcome. <laughs> um, you, yeah, were, you, you were the, just before you go, you were the designated minute taker, but I think <laughs> Janet got that started. Um, so we'll have you do that next next meeting. Oh, okay. That that, that's why it was, I, and my apologies. I just, uh, thank goodness, uh, I'm not, you know, a half hour late anyway. <laughs> it fell off my calendar. So I, I appreciate it. So who's taking notes today? Janet. Janet, Jack, okay. you owe me. You owe Thanks, me big Janet. Yeah. I owe you big time. Big time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you have a did you have any uh comment for, for Stephanie or just um introducing your your presence? Great. Thanks. All right, good. Um Chris, any um updates? Yeah, we're fine-tuning the um RFP for the person who's going to help us to write the solar bylaw, who's going to help us deal with technical issues. So we should be putting that out this month, um, but we haven't gotten it completed yet. So okay, great. Okay, and I think um, um, that also relates to um, our work plan and um, maybe even our next, uh, some, some thoughts we had to discuss with regard to our um, agenda items for next time, mm -hmm. just with regard to, um, you know, when when um, uh, the working group can sort of expect to have sort of a, at least a skeleton of what, what a bylaw might look like. So we can we can defer that conversation until a bit later, but um, that's, that's good to hear. Um, May I say one more thing? Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, any, any, yeah, for, for so sure. I remember a couple of meetings ago, um, Janet said that she wanted to put together a framework or skeleton or outline of uh, the solar bylaw. So I wondered if she is going to do that or if we should just um, go ahead and, and do that. 
So I've been looking at a bunch of different bylaws, um, including the ones that we looked at, and I'm trying to get, um, maybe Jack can help me, um, PV, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to give me like an open version of the bylaw that they have. Because when I copy, try to copy it off their website, because I thought that would be a good um, framework to start with, like the beginning of our skeleton. And so I had a remarkable amount of back and forth, but I, I feel like we're close to getting that. And I've also been taking notes on different provisions that could be added. So um, I would be happy to send that out, but I, I need to um, I need a few weeks on that at least. But I'm I've so I've kind of been thinking about it. I've been reading about it. I'm collecting other things. Um, but I would love to like put. I'm happy to put the skeleton together using that as a base because I thought that was a super um, comprehensive one. So, so can I? Can I ask a question? Perhaps I missed this at the last meeting, but what bylaw are we considering basing our bylaws off of? Um, you know, we haven't decided that. I just, yeah. I, oh, so I thought that the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, it has the um, solar guide. I'm not sure I have the right word for that. And it has, it's 170 pages long, but at the end of it, it has um, sort of a draft bylaw that also has questions in it. And so I thought that would be a great framework to start with. Um, and then you know, I've been I've been collecting, I mean, we have the three bylaws that we looked at. I have Shootsbury, they have I have two versions of Shootsbury. I have some some information left over from the planning board looking at this. And um Athol, I think I have a copy of Athol too. So my idea was to use the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission bylaw as a framework and then um, kind of work from there. And then also there'll be questions in there, which is what I like. It's like, what do we think, you know, in terms of X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And then I also know, you know, Chris has talked about an overlay district. And so I was going to put a section in there, leaving language open for that, obviously not knowing where that would be. But, um, you know, and then punching that in and starting to think about how that works. So I'm happy to do the the beginning legwork of it, but I really do need the PVPC to give me the open kind of word version of what they have. I could copy it. It's just like a, it's going to come out as a horrendous mess. And that, so that's. So, yeah, just a, another follow-up question. So that bylaw, Near Valley bylaw, is that based primarily off of the, um, uh, do we are bylaw or I, I it's in, it must be in the drive stuff I need to take a look at it I'm I'm pretty just for the record pretty opposed to using the athol athol bylaw as an example for ours just because um, they're concerned they're a, a pretty anti-solar community um, and I don't think that's a good starting framework so perhaps the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission is more like the state's bylaw guidance um, but I'd like to I'd like to look at that before Jen. I just don't want you to spend a ton of time and then have me come back and say, oh, I don't agree. Um, so I have I missed Laura. I missed the beginning. Of what you said. Um, what bylaw did you reference in the beginning? Was that the state one? Yeah, the the state's okay. bylaw. Yep. The state's bylaw. I um, is kind of general and it's kind of old. And I think the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission one is using that as a basis, but it goes in sort of deeper. I know the Athol one is super focused on view sheds um, to an extraordinary extent and was, was sort of informative to me and in how you could, you know, get different views and yeah. stuff like that. But I, I know Athol was very focused on view sheds and I'm not using that yeah. one. I, okay. Yeah, I'll take a look at the Pioneer, Pioneer Valley one as well. And I'll just, um, I know uh, Mike Sloan at DOER and I'm, uh, I, I just wanna get a sense for perhaps the state has updated it, but uh, maybe the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission does have a good base. So I'd like to review too. Sure. Yeah, Jack. Yes, uh, so I'm just wondering, um, uh, Chris, do you want me to, to to try to grab that word document from from them, or is that something something I can take off your plate? So you no know, problem. Jack, I'm actually finally got somebody on the email thing, so I think they're going to send it to me. Oh, okay. Um, if if I need help, I'll call you. <laughs> All right, sure. 
You know, I'm All in right. the middle of this, like nevertheless <clears throat> thing. But I think um, I think I finally found somebody who's going to help me. If I can't get it by the end of the week, I'll call you and see what you can do. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm in agreement. I think the Pioneer Valley Planning uh, Commission, you know, bylaw template is a, is a good start for us. I can help with that as well. Okay. Thanks. Right, and and not that you need too many hands on deck, but um, Eric Weiss, I think, is the key author there. Um, yes. So okay. I, I know him fairly well too. Um, uh, so um, I can't imagine it'd be too hard to get, but um, I, I would imagine they would want people to use it. So, um, uh, but if there's any issues, just let it, let us all know. And okay. Uh, all right. Thank you. Um, and um, I guess what I would, and this is, we let's table this for now. But I wouldn't mind maybe it as we get to to the end of this meeting and talk about. Um, agenda items for next time and maybe even the next couple times. Um, I think um, this topic, uh, Janet, and appreciate your lead here um, of um, uh, of um, you know maybe uh, even even if you're not done next time, uh, sort of an update on the process and sort of what yeah. your what your um, how we can be helpful and what you're sort of thinking and what it's sort of starting to look like and and because uh, I think. Um, uh, and I don't, I, I do recall the PVPC guide and, and uh, bylaw would agree that that seemed to be a, an appropriate one for us to, to start with. I don't recall the template at the end that you're referring to, uh, but um, uh, it sounds like it's what we need. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, I would try to keep it as, as um, vanilla as possible uh, yeah. with, within, within the, um, uh, then all, also the, 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 um, important data and, and information and flavors that we want to add uh, that um, and that that can then be the basis for continued discussions throughout the um, throughout the fall and the and the winter Definitely. quite quickly. Yeah. I, I think the PVC PVPC one is good for us because it has sort of like the rural Western Mass vibe to it and the DOER is a little so generic that you know it, it was they were trying to do something that fits you know suburban and and things like that and it was also sort of an early version so yes yeah great hi martha yep uh, may, may i ask chris oh, what you had in mind for you for your technical consultant i mean uh are there particular issues that that you feel that uh you know we we need the knowledge from or i may i answer yeah, yeah please yeah yeah so I think it mainly revolves around battery storage that we oh, really yeah. haven't had that much experience with it here. And um, the state is starting to require it for any solar installation. And we're starting to get interest from um, people who might want to put in um, freestanding battery storage. So we need to get a good um, technical consultant about that since we are not um, ourselves knowledgeable in, in that area. Yeah. And, and just re remind me for our working group um, and our bylaw that we're drafting, is that inclusive of standalone battery storage? That's something that you have to decide. Do okay. you want to allow standalone battery storage here? Um, I think that, you know, you're probably going to, um, how can I say this? It will probably come up as a topic um, before May. And, um, you know, but um, I think it is definitely something you should consider and you could either incorporate it into a solar bylaw, a large solar bylaw, or you could have a separate section that deals with battery storage. So that's something that's part of the discussion that we have to have. Could we ask uh, Dan, do, is there some knowledge you have here that would be helpful about uh, batteries? <laughs> my my knowledge is mostly of, on the uh, mining um, okay. environmental impacts of mining the raw materials that go into the batteries. Mm -hmm. uh, I can definitely contribute in that regard, um, but as far as uh, the installation of the batteries themselves, I don't have any knowledge. Okay. Um, I have when I was thinking about batteries, which, as you know, can be very fraught um, issue. I mean, batteries themselves can be fraught. I, I began to sort of think about um, what happens with battery packs on houses. And so, you know, 
I've been doing some Google searches of like what goes wrong with batteries. And, you know, as you saw the bus one, there was a freestanding battery storage of, um, what do you call it? Um, Tesla that burned for three days. You know, somebody had some battery packs, you know, on site and they one went up and then this is in Burlington and they were able to keep it cool enough so there wasn't thermal runaway. And I began to just brood about all the wood houses in Amherst. And, you know, like, do we want to, you know, and maybe this is for the technical expert is have some regulations on what kind of battery packs are you going to stick on a house that, you know, are safe. And I looked up national standards and a lot are being developed. Um, Shootsbury has language about battery storage and talks about national standards. But I kept on wondering, like, is, you know, can... Yeah, I was hoping somebody in the group or or the technical expert would have knowledge, like what are the best organizations for the national standards, you know, and things like that. So I would love more information about problems, what works, what are the concerns, and then also to loop in the fire department to see, you know. Um, so there's just that that looks like a really big issue to me. And it could go from a battery pack on a house to freestanding to the solar arrays. Or you know UMass with their buses and things like that. So, yeah, I think I think this is where the technical consultant could help us. Uh, I do know I I did I was involved in a webinar probably a year ago uh, with um, Representative Roy I think from the middle of the state um, uh, that was uh, a town that was looking at. <laughs> large standalone battery storage very large um and uh, there was an expert on that panel from the national yeah. lab uh pacific northwest labs i believe it was uh that had um some really good expertise on on um battery storage and safety mm -hmm. um that uh, we could maybe i could at least find that presentation yeah, um, yeah. The, the second thing i'd like I, I would say is that um you know we're in the situation where we're you know, drafting a bylaw that's, you know, going to be a bylaw for the next, you know, mm -hmm. five or 10 years or whatever. Um, and so, um, you know, to, to my mind, it can't be that um, specific to this chemistry or that chemistry, because that's constantly changing. Mm -hmm. It has to be more about performance standards uh of what what things they can and can't do um and 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 protections i do like the idea of of uh, citing national standards or sa safety standards with regard to batteries because th that you could cite and and they can be co they can be constantly updated mm -hmm. um, um as as technologies change and and improve um and so uh, i'm struggling a little bit in terms of how you know how much research we have to do on every mm -hmm. different type of battery chemistry that yeah. might be out there because it's going to be we, we can't predict that um uh and and um but how do we how do we um think potentially think more about performance based um guide guidance uh with regard to uh how these battery systems and i wouldn't even limit it to batteries i mean there's other storage mechanisms flywheels um and uh there's this new gravity gravity based uh um storage um and so we might you know broaden it broaden it to think about some of these other um storage mechanisms as well i don't i don't think we'll have pump storage yeah. in amherst but who right. knows? <laughs> Dwayne, can i make a comment yeah I, please yeah thanks laura so um i guess a question and then a comment i miss i was under the assumption that um these bylaws are not going to um be discussing you know home storage units like the tesla power wall and things like that we're just talking about you know um more dg standalone storage in this conversation right okay um, well it yeah, sounds like, I so like I, I, I guess, to be answered. okay so i um, yeah, I, sure. I have um so um two colleagues of mine um, do the standalone storage division. We're talking like 200 megawatt, 400 megawatt standalone storage sites for AES and Nextera. Okay. And they are doing a number. So I think to your point, um, you know, they had a fire in Arizona for one of these 200 megawatt systems that made national news. And they've been doing, uh, in conjunction with the fire departments, um, like uh, test burns in 
and um, you know discrete places um, to see to test different mechanisms for response. And so I, I think that the summary there, like for example, one thing they found is actually if there is a fire, you're not supposed to open the door at all. You're supposed to just let it be contained mm -hmm. um, because the introducing oxygen um, causes it to really uh, you know become dangerous. So I think whatever we put in the bylaw for standalone storage really needs to account for the evolution of best practices. Mm -hmm. um, because obviously standalone storage has tremendous benefits. I mean, you're you're really maximizing the renewables on a grid and deploying, you know, increasing the ability to deploy it at times when um, you know it's most necessary, uh, reducing the use of fossil fuels. At the same time, I think, you know. Certainly, this committee is not on the forefront of research in terms of the best way to handle this. So I think, you know, just uh, I think that unfortunately might have to be more unlike citing solar that might have to be more. I don't want to say open ended, but um, it's going to change constantly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Thanks, Laura. Um, Jack and then Chris. Thank you, thank you, um, Lauren. My hand. Um, I just want to say that um, we are, you know, doing the constructing this white paper through the Water Supply Protection Committee, and we are hitting on on the battery uh, uh, quite heavily. So we'll have, you know, a good amount of references. Uh, the you know National Fire Prevention uh, Agency or NFPA really, uh, has some of the best. Um, documents, but we're going to touch on that uh, just so people know that's coming. And and then also I wanted to 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 say that um, way back I think Chris Dressrup and I had a conversation. The city of Holyoke uh, with Holyoke Gas and Electric, they are separating battery versus solar uh, bylaws because they see you know battery you know you know forward thinking. That there's going to be more battery installations in neighborhoods to help with with peaking and uh, peak shaving and things like that, and so they strongly suggested that we had two bylaws. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I, you know, I think Chris may, uh, you know, agree uh, with as an approach. But again, you know, my digging into this the white paper there. There is no bylaw for batteries right now, so we 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 would be you know on the front end of of this. People are figuring out, and and you know it's 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 a wild wild west with regard to the battery um, situation right now, as far as <laughs> I can tell. But um, look for look for our white paper. Hopefully, in a month we'll we'll get that okay. done. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Great. Okay. I think we're getting um, deeply into batteries, which is probably. A whole nother topic for a whole nother agenda item in in the future. So, but let's keep keep. Let, I want to hear from Chris and then Stephanie, um, and then um, and then we can uh, maybe uh, make progress. Uh, we're still on staff updates, I think. <laughs> Chris, so I, I just wanted to note that we are focused on large scale um, solar installations, and that would probably include large scale battery installations. I don't think we're focused at all on the residential scale, especially single family homes. So I just wanted to clarify that. Thank Thanks. Yeah. Okay, that's that's helpful. Yeah, okay, uh, Stephanie? Yeah, I just wanted to point out um, that I would say even within the next year or so, um, there are so many opportunities and so much push from the federal government now and even the state government with our new legislation um, that's addressing climate change and a lot of that is pushing electrification, that there will be probably more direct guidance because this is going to be an issue that's going to come up everywhere, really. So um, I would anticipate that you'll get more um, guidance in the in the near future. And even if you don't, I mean, even if it's not quite in existence when you're ready to submit this proposal to the, um, to the town council, my guess is that you know, it'll probably have to be revised or at least reference the updated guidance. Great. I, just to add to that, I, I would expect that as these battery storage, both stationary and in vehicles, become pervasive throughout the state and the country, 
that our first responders will also be, um, there'll be programs for our first responders to be um, trained and equipped. Um, uh, cause uh, uh, I, I would imagine that would be have, have to be part of the state, um, strategy. Um, and so, um, again, we, uh, we, 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 let's sort of keep that in mind as well as we move forward. All right. Okay. That was actually really, um, good conversation. Thank you. Um, and uh, we're not done with batteries <laughs> at all. <laughs> um, okay, but anything else in terms of staff updates? Um, great. Um, I also think it, uh, while it's not technically on the agenda, I think maybe if uh, Stephanie is okay, it, it's also we, several of, of us re represent liaison with our, with our other um, uh, committees in town. Um, and so I wouldn't mind also maybe seeing if there was any um, uh, updates on any of the other committees that we liaise with um, and represent to some extent on this committee. Um, I'll say for ECAC, I, 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 I've never done this before, but I missed the last two meetings. Um, <laughs> so I don't, I don't actually have an update from ECAC, um, but, um, uh, but I, I think it would be helpful for us to sort of go through that process as well as we, as we move forward. Um, so any other um, uh, of the committees that we represent. I know um, we have the water and the conservation committee, I believe. Um, I'd have to look at my, at the red, oh yeah, and the planning board um, and so forth. Uh, uh, yeah, um, but any, but any um, updates from those committees that are uh, useful for us, Jack? Yeah, I'm gonna say that we, we are close to having um, a draft yeah. For the for the white paper, uh, with regard to how, you know, construction monitoring, um, oh, you know, monitoring. leaching, uh, oh, uh, threats, you know, from solar, you know, fields and things like that. Tr trying to address the water resources uh, concerns that we've um, kind of come across with with regard to you know the general community, and, and we're we're even going to have a. a uh, uh, what Q and A, sort of a fact sheet sort of thing, just responding. So it's, it's, it should be a good document, but we want to get that to the entire committee uh, within the next couple of weeks. So we're, we're still a month off, Great. but I think that'll be very helpful, and and it hits on a lot of the technical stuff, although it's focused on water resources. So. Mm -hmm. Can I can I ask there just in terms of what we might expect in terms of the scope of it? It's, there seems like, uh, in my man, there may be three three things here. One is um, the just the any uh, impacts of the solar array itself on groundwater, uh, just by passively sitting there. Uh, yes. Second is is likewise with energy storage, uh, and then third, and, and I'm um, is the construction process itself um, is are all three of those being looked at or, or are you focused on one or yeah so there's three main uh, sections the one is the construction monitoring guidance on that uh with regard to the you know uh stormwater uh pollution prevention plans and how that's so integral um and then the second part is water quality oriented and that takes on the solar fields as well as battery and then the 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 third one is water quantity and how is that you know, how is a solar field being placed in an agricultural setting or a forest setting? How does that change uh, water recharge and, and you know, down gradient receptors? So those are the three main sections. Okay. Um, with the middle one kind of being water quality with both solar and battery. Um, and then, you know, and then we'll do these, you know, Q&A things just to make it uh, so we're, we're hitting what we, we have, uh, gathered from the community in terms of concerns and try to address those head on. Great. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, thanks. Thanks for all that work. And, and yeah, I think that's going to be really helpful to, to this committee, this working group as well. Jack, what's the name of your committee again? I had water protection, supply protection committee. <laughs> huh? Too many protections. Uh, it's water supply, uh, uh, protection. Committee. Okay. Yeah. 
Great. Any other updates from any of the other uh, commissions or uh, boards or uh, committees? No. Great. Okay, let's move on then to um, the next agenda topic, which is our work plan and time frame. And uh, let me thank Janet for taking a, a, a good look at at it and um, providing some comments and then actually in, in um, which was my sort of intent as well as to sort of combine um, her thoughts with um, with the uh, spreadsheet based plan that I had laid out uh, so that we had one document that we could all uh, use as a guide uh, for us to, to, to pace ourselves as well as to um, understand our, our scope. Um, and so um, if helpful, um, uh, I could uh, put that on the screen um, so we could look at it as a shared screen. Is that, would that be helpful? Um, well, let me, let me go ahead and do that. And um, uh, oh, sorry, I have it open here somewhere. Dwayne, I have it if you need me to. Are, are we looking at the revised work plan that well, Janet what, what I, I, if, if, if uh, you can indulge me, I actually made a, a, a version to show, uh, which was basically my version, which was basically um, uh, Janet's version, but then I highlighted the differences oh, good. <laughs> so that, so that we can focus on, on those. Um, and uh, so if I can, if I can share the screen, I think I, I can. Um, yeah. Just be sure to send that to me if you can, Dwayne. Okay, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay, it's it's nothing remarkable. <laughs> it's just the spreadsheet with with uh, essentially uh, in in red uh, were the th I think three areas uh, where uh, Janet provided some some uh, edits uh, to. Uh, I don't think there were any edits to sort of the time frame and the pacing, uh, as far as I could could tell, but uh, a little bit in terms of the scope of our um, activities and our tasks. Um, and I think that's worthy of some discussion uh, specifically, but also um, uh, just generally whether this work plan uh, looks appropriate for folks, both in terms of the um, uh, the list, uh, the categories of, of activities and tasks, as well as the um, time frame that we have to complete our work by uh, May, May of next year. Um, uh, I've sort of laid, this is not, you know, we, we're not gonna be sent to the principal's office if we don't make these deadlines, but it's really to um, keep ourselves on pace uh, and confident that we have the time we need. Uh, and also to constantly remind ourselves not to um, delay and, and uh, wait to the end to get things done because there's a lot, a lot to do. Um, and uh, and already we're in you know we're right you're we're at the beginning of September essentially, uh, and so uh, I think we are on on pace, uh, but um, we start accelerating I think to some extent uh, in terms of what we need to uh, start accomplishing. Uh, so let me and 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 just in, in my way of looking at this, I so black is where we sort of are really focused on these issues and accomplishing those tasks. And then whether they're grayed out, it's kind of, we continue doing those tasks, but it's at a uh, somewhat of a, of a secondary level. Uh, but let me first, before honing in on Janet's input and suggestions of whether there were any thoughts about the work plan activities or pacing um, and, um, um, uh, before or, or additions to activities that we should should add here. Um, yeah, one of the problems with uh, sharing is I don't see everybody as well. Um, okay, now I do. Okay. Okay, so any any uh, thoughts or comments on on this before we hone in on Janet's inputs? <laughs> Great. Um, okay, I, I just to 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 because uh, I want to also use this not to, to sort of alert ourselves of what's in, in ahead of us in the next, particularly in the next month or so, is where we're really starting to. Uh, I think exactly what we were talking about earlier, uh, and I think um, with uh, again Janet's um, lead uh, taking some of this effort here on um, uh, well, we have actually done a fair amount of reviewing already, but now starting to outline. 
uh, a, a, a skeleton or framework for the um, for the bylaw, uh, uh, and and then and then as we as we as we start that and, and continue to do that, we can start then also deliberating um, on, um, on on um, some of the um, uh, key areas that we want to discuss. Uh, but that really goes on in, in earnest uh, in this time frame. Um, I think we're right on time with regard to potentially providing some input with regard to the uh, to the consultants. Uh, but um, uh, uh, but I think we're we're in good shape here in terms of of pacing ourselves for September. Um, okay, but let me uh, then sort of hone in on on uh, Jan, and maybe you you can. I know you're sort of taking notes at the same time, but yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not doing that so well right now. But yeah, yeah okay. so so, uh, but, but maybe we can t take one one at a time, and sort of maybe if you can um, uh, comment a little bit about your your rationale and justification for uh, and and purpose for adding additional um, some additional depth to the. Um, uh, tasks here. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dwayne, especially for putting it in red. I had such um, a problem like working with the Excel sheet that I was thrilled just to get whatever I wrote down there. And so you did what I, I probably should have done, or but I was afraid to try. So um, I just said some, some ads here and I based it on, um, you know, the, the charge and, you know, kind of goes back to like who does what and who decides what. And it seems like from the charge that we're supposed to be um, working on a community outreach process to determine what the community values are. And then we're gonna incorporate those values into our priority map and the bylaw itself. And so I just added for the first one that we're working with the consultant on the assessment, you know, giving input to them and then working directly with them in terms of preparing and implementing the community outreach. And I don't mean it to sort of push the consultant aside, but just to sit next to the consultant, because I think that um, one of the reasons we're here is that we're community members and we have a lot of contacts and you know ins and outs. And then we need to be listening at those sessions um, and you know helping figure out what information need, the community needs to hear, what questions to ask, maybe you know the forums, maybe a survey that's sent out to reach people who can't make those dates. Um, so to me, that just seems, you know, it, it just, I just pulled that language directly from the charge, you know, which I could read, but I, I don't know, I have that memo, which I just, all the language in that memo is just pulled out from the charge. Yep. Um, yeah, I think, um, you know, again, I think this, we've discussed this a, a bit in the past, but I think we've got to hone in on it as well. Um, you know, I'm sort of comfortable with that with regard to um, working and 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 contributing input to the to the uh, consultant uh, who will who will be um, primarily in charge with the community with preparing uh, and and implementing the community outreach uh, and engagement. Um, I think we clearly have a role in our charge uh, and and in in our working group here. Um, to um, provide input to that process uh, to the consultant, I think as you've laid it out here, um, uh, to, to 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 work with the con uh, with the consultant, I'll, I'll sort of edit that uh, with the consultant um, to help them um, uh, prepare uh, to prepare uh, and prepare for the implementation of the uh, of the community engagement strategy. Um, um, so I'm, I'm looking at that first edit. I'm, I'm, sort of, I'm good with that, but appreciate um, any input from anybody else or, or thoughts from anybody else, including uh, Stephanie or, or, or Chris. Yeah, Stephanie. Thanks, Dwayne. So I, I don't, I really, and I've never had any problem with this committee providing input to the consultant. I just want to be clear that staff are the project managers for this assessment and that it makes sense to provide feedback, but I don't know how direct engagement that you will have 
with the consultant. And it doesn't mean that there won't be an opportunity if it works within the budget, but again, we have a limited budget. So I think, you know, there'll be certainly opportunities to weigh in and provide feedback um, and to help shape that community engagement, but it will won't necessarily be directed specifically by the committee, if that makes sense, because there are other, you know, the contract is with the town and there will be other departments and other folks who will want to weigh in, including the ECAC on this as well. So I just wanted to be clear about that. So Duane, if I could just jump in. So in the charge, you know, I don't, I, you know, I know, I, I understand Stephanie's point in terms of input, input on the solar assessment, because that's the um, consultant's purview and thank heaven, because obviously you know, they're the experts on that. But in the charge, it says to literally to develop the solar zoning bylaw, this SBWG will engage the community to ascertain community values, identify criteria and standards to be used in reviewing and permitting, you know, blah, 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 and prioritize locations for solar development, including large scale ground mount rooftop and parking lot canopies. So it, it doesn't make sense to me that we should go into a community engagement process, which the town council has asked us to do and not work with the consultant. And I, I don't know, I don't know, think it will just to me, it's like, how do we do that unless we're working with the consultant? And that that's what yes. we're supposed to do. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And I actually, you know, to prepare so, for this okay. conversation, I did um, um, re re read those that, that section of the of the uh, charge, yeah. but then there's a following section of the charge, um, which which more or less enumerates through bullets of what this the solar work uh, bylaw working group shall do. And there it's a little bit, it stated a little bit differently that the town, um, uh, re, that we will review the, the uh, resource assessment that will identify um, locations and so forth. And that the, the working group will help engage the community uh, mm -hmm. to ascertain community values and so forth. So it seemed a little bit stated a little bit differently in two different areas of the charge, I, I would agree. Uh, but I think, um, you know, I, I think we we need to be prepared that we have this tech, the the solar consultant, um, or hope to have the solar consultant, um, and that they are working for the town. Uh, they're they're working uh, engaged with several committees, um, and that they are under limited budget, um, and they have the expertise and scope to actually do the formal community engagement. Um, and so I think. Um, what we need to do is is figure out how we can be most helpful uh, in that process. Um, uh, that does not um, overly burden the consultant, um, given their limited scope and budget, uh, as well as um, is done properly through through the proper channels of the of who the consultant is working for, which is the town staff. Um, so, yeah, Dwayne, I, my understanding of this yeah. was, and it makes sense to me. I know we covered it before is that we're going to be able to review the consultants work, but really our comments are going to go through Stephanie and other town staff. Yeah, uh, just yeah. to make sure it's on track just just as just just as just as other the ECAC and others, their comments are also going to be siphoned through town staff um, just for the sake of efficiency. Yeah, exactly. And I, I would also add to that, I think, in addition to reviewing the uh results uh or, or findings of the of the consultant um i think we do have a role to play in bringing ideas forward to them at the beginning uh uh you know in a, in a way that's not burdensome and is done through through uh, stephanie uh, and, and chris um but um uh in terms of what what we as a as a working group would um offer as suggestions uh with regard to uh, the types of questions or, or preferences that we would like to uh, uh, solicit in, in, in through their methodologies uh, from the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Martha. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would like, I would like to, to, to say something here and, and uh, Stephanie that, you know, it is our town manager who approved the charge written to, for our committee and the town council that approved it. And so our town's government has stated that it is our committee that really has 
the role and the overall responsibility to uh, solicit the input from the community. I mean, we've all agreed that it really makes sense to have the consultant actually um, do the work of, you know, setting up and planning a forum and so on. But, but it really seems to me that our charge is clear that it's our role to define the types of questions to be asked at the forum and, you know, and how and what to solicit from the community and that that's our job to do. And so it means maybe at the minimum, we request that the consultants simply, you know, come on Zoom and listen in to the discussions that we have regarding that and, and take on that role. I don't see that it's a, a big time sink for the consultant, but I really think that the town government has defined that as being our role to uh, work to, to define the community input. And then we agree that the consultant is the one who will actually, you know, do the process. But I, I just a follow up question on that though. We don't have expertise in developing completely objective questions in this, I'm assuming the consultant will have similar experience engaging other communities across the state. I have a lot of concern, you know, like I, I have no, no concern that we're gonna be able to interact um, meaningfully with the consultant through town staff, but I don't think this committee has been selected for our ability to lead you know, public dialogue and ask non-leading questions and really solicit what we need to solicit from the community member. Yeah. So I think, I guess my, my concern is the more, you know, we want them to be able to do their work and have them be an objective third party, mm -hmm. um, you know, because this group, you know, we're, we're great, but we're not objective. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, I think, you know, uh, Stephanie, I'm sure you have a response. Yeah. Well, I would also say that our committee was selected to have, you know, seven people with with kind of a wide range of expertise. And admittedly, no one of us is, uh, you know, has a deep uh, base of knowledge on, you know, all the different topics. But we were selected to have a whole range and to include, you know, three community members who presumably, uh, you know, have a role to, you know, listen to what people in our community are concerned about and uh, would like to have included sure. in, the, in the questions and so on. Sure. So that's why I see we, we, we have a role. It's not to say that we are presuming to know all the answers. So but I, I think a lot of us also have had experience in our own past of, of you know, conducting forums and workshops and all kinds of things on, on various topics. So it's not like we're totally devoid of uh, yeah. experience. And... Yeah. I would I would add that um, I, I think to Lara's point, I mean, the 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 um, the, the 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 expertise needed to solicit um, public um, perspective, understand public perspectives um, and preferences um, in an objective way uh, with all the issue, fraught issues associated with with solar is it does take some expertise um, and does take uh, sort of a, to some extent a third party that's well equipped uh, to um, engage with the community to solicit that those ants those those uh, senses I guess from from the community um, I do I do think we have the expertise to add uh, sort of our perspectives of of the types of of, uh, of questions or nuances um, and um, uh, uh, um, uh, range of, of, of issues that we, we, we think it would be important to, to cover in this community engagement, uh, but then to some extent leave it to, to, to the expertise of this consultant, assuming we get, get who we need um, to, to, to take that on. Um, I will say that um, I know DOER through their whole process of the statewide assessment is also trying to solicit similar issues uh, uh, with regard to constituent preferences on, on solar. That's part of the scope of work of this consultant. Um, and um, I, I know because I was asked to be um, a reviewer of their initial sort of uh, sur survey is that they're 
there's a there's there's a lot of learning that is going on with regard to even how to pose these questions in ways that provide meaningful responses um, and, and input. Uh, and I think they're that that they're still uh, struggling with that to some extent. Um, and so, you know, I, I think it's it's a it's a cross between an art and a science uh, mm -hmm. in, in doing this. And I think we can be helpful uh, and will be helpful. Uh, and should be helpful. And, and uh, I think we do have that role to play, but I think it has to be within the confines uh, as charged by the town, uh, but through the mechanisms that we have as a committee, which is you know through staff and within the um, constraints of the contract um, and budget that the consultant will have. Do you uh, know, I, I just want to jump in here and sort of get back to the charge. I think, you know, I raised this question, I don't know if it was the first or second meeting is, who's the decider to use the infamous phrase of a former president. And so, you know, we have a community process, you know, it seems logical to me that our committee or, you know, some groups of us can work with the consultant and the town staff on developing, you know, a questionnaire or what information be presented. It seems like that would be a good collaborative process. I'm not sure, you know, that I have to send a question to Stephanie to send to somebody, or maybe there's just a meeting with a few of us with the consultant and town staff, but we are charged to, to do this community outreach. But the question I have is who decides what the community priorities are or the values are? So, you know, we have a process, we come to the end of it and we can come, you know, to me, this, this committee um, has been asked to work with the community to decide its values, what it wants to see in terms of locations and guidelines and then we in, we take that whatever we figured out that the community is saying and put that into a bylaw. I think that's our job. And I the reason I think it's our job is because the charge says that over and over again. And so um, I don't feel like I have expertise in how to draft an objective question, but I do think I have something to contribute about who to talk to, what could be in the question, what information the committee is seeking, trying to figure out values. Um, you know, I'm sure the DOER isn't just passing to the consultant, like, oh, just figure out what community values are around, you know, green energy, but they're going to be directly involved with the consultant and framing those questions. And so I just think, you know, when I see the charge, we're in the center of deciding, of setting, you know, working on a community process. It's great to have the consultant obviously defer and work with them. Um, that, that strengthens the process, I think, um, you know, at the end of the day, I think this, this committee is going to, the group is going to say, here are the community values we heard, and then we're going to put together a priority map of where solar locations are going to be. I'm not making this up. It's all in the charge. And so that sure. memo that I wrote just says all this, and I'm just picking out language from the charge. So I, that's that's what my 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 red edits are, is putting the, the our working group back in as the decider on these really important issues. Nobody else was asked by town council to do the, these things. We were asked. Yeah, I think, I guess I hear you, Janet, and I think, I don't think, I guess my perspective is the way things are are laid out, I don't, I don't see our role being diminished at all. I just really want to make sure that um, it truly is a third party objective source that's soliciting feedback from community members. And when we put forth our final product to the town council, we've gone with a third party who and just to be clear, this is a, a trade in and of itself. People who develop questionnaires and lead focus groups and, you know, careers are built on these things. So, you know, I, I actually, while I love the idea of having, you know, a consultant sort of hear our, you know, the things we want to understand, you know, are people concerned about this or that or, or whatever, um, I think it's going to be really critical at the end of the day that people look at our process and say, they really did take that money assigned mm -hmm. by the town and engage a third party mm -hmm. who doesn't have an agenda because, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and we base our bylaw off of, off of those results. And let, let me add to that, um, and this gets to this activity that has the red edit in it. It seems like during the period of October and November, which I think is about the right time frame, is that we as a, as a working group need to um, work together to come to some with some uh, to some consensus document 
um, that provides our collective input uh, and, 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 and suggestions to this consultant uh, in terms of not necessarily their methodologies, which they may have expertise on, uh, but with regard to the types of uh, areas of questionings, areas of questions, um, and, uh, and, may, and maybe some information about the community uh, that they may not be aware of as an outsider in terms of uh, groups that they might uh, connect with that could also be the town uh, or other any any other committees that are involved with the consultant. Uh, but in terms of, uh, you know, from from our perspective in developing this bylaw, this this is the sense of questionings uh, and, and uh, uh, information that we would like, we would suggest, and we would like to get from from this community engagement. Uh, and that that's in terms of the decider. Um, I, I think we need to sort of think about um, when we get to that point of, of a collective decision making uh, and cons consensus uh, in, in some way uh, where we can all, and I don't think it's going to be hard, uh, yeah. but to come together with a, a, a document uh, that we then offer to the, um, to the consultants as our, uh, as our uh, input, um, as it says here, uh, to the consultant um, mm -hmm. Uh, on on the uh, questioning as well as uh, the form of community engagement, uh, and then and then in terms of um, you know the outcome is that I think it's up to the consultant to then take that work on, use their expertise, their methodology, doing that objective surveying, coming out with their report of their findings, and then um, and then and, and and an opportunity to have some feedback uh, on that. But then um, uh, you know we as a committee. Uh, can then, you know, we'll make use of those findings. And I think we would have the opportunity to opine on, on whether we uh, agree or disagree or to what extent we, we're, we're uh, in agreement or not, uh, or, or areas that we think um, are still unclear, but we need to move forward anyhow. Um, and, and use, the, use that, that document, uh, you know, this would become later, later in um, February, March timeframe, I guess, uh, depending on the consultant's timeframe, um, we would get to that point. Mm -hmm. So let me, um, I know, and I don't know, um, I know, let, let's go with Jack and then Stephanie. And, and Laura, I'm not sure whether your hand is still up or, or um, it is re, re, renew, renewed up, uh, but let's go with Jack. No, no, it's not, sorry. Okay, and then let Jack and then Steph, I wanna hear from Stephanie. Jack, you're on mute. Yes. So um, I just feel like I have my raise, my my hand raised, and I feel like it doesn't matter. Like people are just jumping in, and uh, it just seems a little awkward that people are kind of not, you know, getting your acknowledgement uh, beforehand and just kind of jumping in with comments. I just I I don't think that's <laughs> I don't think that's right. So I'm wondering if we can kind of scale it back and and people raise their hand. And you call on them, and and you speak at that time. Uh, so I feel like I've I've been cut off uh, <laughs> several times okay. uh, during this meeting. Yeah. So, so, Jack, I'm sorry if I was doing that. I was sort of thinking of this as sort of my item that I've been trying to present for a few meetings. So I was taking a different <laughs> role, but I'm happy to raise my hand. Okay. I, um, I appreciate that. All right. Uh, but anyway, I you know I'm I'm kind of like in the camp with Laura that. I know the town has done so much in the way of, um, you know, doing contracts with consultants, taking in the the information, you know, during these meetings, and, you know, and I'm thinking of, uh, you know, Stephanie and Chris, that they just, you know, they, they siphon all this stuff in, they work with the consultant, and then the consultant will present their work to us. And at that point, you know, when they are uh, presenting a product, that will have an additional, you know, input. But we're we're providing Chris and Stephanie with input, you know, during these meetings. Uh, so, you know, I, I just feel like this hands-on thing with the consultants is is unusual uh, for for a committee to 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 trying to you know, you know, be over involved with it because that's always been the charge of our town uh, professionals. So I just. Again, I, I feel like we're hitting this every week, <laughs> and I'm wondering why. Um, so that's all. All right, thank you. Um, and yeah, let's and I agree. Let's try to 
hit this for one last time and then move move forward uh, um, and 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 uh, uh, be uh, comfortable with the path going forward. Um, Stephanie. Thank you, Dwayne. Um, so just for clarification, in the RFP, the consultant was specifically being sought to provide objectivity in this process. And that was very clearly stated in the RFP. So they were being sought to have their experience in doing outreach with communities on these kind of difficult, challenging issues in, in terms of weighing the priorities of the community. And yes, you all come from very strong backgrounds, but you also all come from a very specific viewpoint and viewpoints. So the idea was for the consultant to be able to synthesize all of that outreach and input from various groups, not just your own. The ECAC, I can tell you, feels very strongly about the assessment. And in fact, they were the ones who actually called out for an assessment several years ago when they first came uh, together as a group. So they feel very much as invested in this as you do. So that's why you are both, both committees were written in to have some input to the assessment. And I think you're tasked with the solar bylaw. That is the product that you are developing. And even though the solar assessment is a portion and a, is a tool for that, it's not the only thing. It's the primary thing that you're focused on is the, the development of the solar bylaw. Um, I worked very closely with the town manager and the development of that charge. And I think at this point, because this keeps being a sticking point and, a, and quite frankly, a bit of a problem because it's derailing you, um, I'm happy to maybe go back to the town manager. I don't know if there's a precedent for examining a charge and revising a charge, but at this point, I think it needs to maybe be clarified if it's causing this much confusion. Um, because I, I I don't see you, you will not, it doesn't make sense for you as a committee to work directly with the consultant alone. Um, you absolutely, all of your feedback, all of your input, your questions, all of that are an important part of developing that assessment, I agree, um, and that community engagement, and it will be included. We're, it's not being developed and designed to keep you out. It's it's to absolutely get your input, but it has to be part of the input of others as well. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, Janet and then Laura. So um, I, I think that the reason this is repeatedly coming up is that we've actually never fully discussed it. And I feel like it's come up, I think I brought it up in the second meeting saying, we need to decide, we need to figure out what we're, you know, to, to say, we need a work plan, but we need to what, know what our tasks are. So Stephanie or, or, or Dwayne, can we go to the August 4th memo? Um, and just to clarify, we're not really, I'm not saying, I'm, I'm not saying that our group should be working on the solar assessment, obviously give some input, but also that we should be working closely on the community engagement plan because that's what the charge says. But if we can go to my memo, I'd like to move on to, you know, the values, ascertaining the values, the site map, the priority site map, and things like that. Because I think those are really the bulk of our work. I don't think we're just asked to write a solar bylaw. And so if we can go to the August 4th memo that I sent out, which is just paraphrasing the charge, or we can just go directly to the charge. It's just, we need to know as a group, as we work together, what we're supposed to produce for the town, what the town council wants us to do, and what we want to produce for the town, have to produce for the town. Um, well, let, let me. Thanks for that. Let me hear from Laura first, and then um, uh, we can we can um, um, look at the charge if, 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 if or the memo if we need to. Yep, Laura. Yeah. So first, I just wanted my hand was up because I wanted to apologize to Jack. Jack, I'm sorry. I'm driving, so I, it's hard for me to navigate the hand thing, but I will be better about it. So certainly, don't like the feeling of being cut off or closed off from a discussion. So apologies there. Um, uh, and, and I think just, you know, I think I don't really have anything else to say about this point, except for the fact that um, it'd be good to put this issue to bed. Um, I think Stephanie's comments were very valid about the ECAC having just as strong opinions. Um, so um, I have nothing else to add about that. Great, thank you. Um, I guess as I see it, this break, this 
breaks up in various different ways um, in, in, in terms of what our activities are. And, and Janet, maybe we can just maintain our focus on this first one first, which is the input uh, to the, um, to the uh, uh, consultant. Um, and, um, um, you know, again, my sense is that uh, we have the opportunity to end the charge to provide input. Uh, and so, um, uh, you know, it's not, we, we don't have the direction over the consultant, that's the town uh, and their contract, but we have the opportunity to provide some uh, input and some uh, thoughts and rec recommendations. And um, uh, I guess in, in my mind, uh, that would really mean uh, a consensus uh, document from, uh, from us that we would work on um, over the next um, uh, time period. Um, uh, that would provide our, our sense of, uh, or our recommendations and thoughts to share with the consultant, um, whether the consultant has in their scope of work, the opportunity to meet with us on, on a zoom. I don't, I don't know. And I don't know if that's key at this point. Uh, but is, you know, in, that's in terms of, of, uh, um, that part of the charge, um, that strikes me as being, um, what we need to, um, uh, to, to, to consider as our, uh, our activity. Uh, but I'm, I'm, uh, only one member of the working group. So, um, open to other, other people's thoughts. And Jan, you have your hand up or is that left over? Oh, I, I was just, uh, it's, I'm hoping to kind of talk about the other things so I could wait till we move on to the, um, charge the other things we need to deliver. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, why don't we so try I'm, to uh, put to bed some of these things as we go go along. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm trying to clarify what Dwayne said. Is, is Dwayne saying do not include the red words in the third um, key activity or do include them? Uh, they, they would include them, um, mm -hmm. provide input and, and I mean, you know, work with the consultant. I don't know exactly what that means, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, whether it's delivering them uh, something uh, and, and entertaining um, the opportunity to meet with them on a, on a, you know, for part of our agenda on one of our meetings or, or outside the meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know exactly what that means, but that, uh, I guess that was language extracted from the charge. Um, yeah. Janet, yep. Uh, so, yep, yeah, that's okay. that's what that was. All right. Thanks. Great. Stephanie? I would just maybe uh, change the language to provide, um, provide input and guidance on community engagement to the consultant. Not work with, but provide feedback and input on the community engagement. Okay, so that that would um, potentially take the place of the uh, of the red language of the otherwise red language. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, and Martha's correct. Uh, Excel is yeah. very hard to edit in. <laughs> yeah. um, so, yeah. Dwayne, I'm I'm sorry, I can't find my little hand here. Okay. <laughs> I I liked Stephanie's word of guidance. Could we yeah. use that? I always like guidance. Yeah, <laughs> so I can't spell it very well. <laughs> okay, thanks. Wayne, could I make a suggestion to yeah. um, to sort of help and maybe move this issue on? Yeah, is perhaps to have a vote on the language <laughs> for this so that you can okay. sort of decide it and then move forward. That's just a <laughs> suggestion. You can take it or leave it. Okay. Um, okay. So the the um, again th this whole this whole scope and I agree we need to sort of put these issues to bed and 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 move on and 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 be in a uh, a, a um, um, common understanding of what we are uh, charged to do and planning to do in our activity. So, um, and, and again, there's this language has some vagueness to it, but it's uh, pro the, the proposed language uh, with 
Stephanie's amendment uh, or Stephanie's suggestion uh, is that we uh, that this task read provide input to consultant on solar assessment and provide feedback and guidance on community engagement strategy on the community engagement strategy to identify community values and priorities. Um, so before, uh, let me hear any comments on that. Um, and then uh, and then we can see if we can just uh, re uh, reach a consensus or, or want to take a vote. Um, so Jack. Yeah, I would just take and work out. And yeah, that, that, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't well, want to and. Leave, leave the and in there, but that and provide, you know, take out the work thing and, and the parentheses. That's that's my only comment. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that was I was my intent. I, I just didn't yeah. want to delete anything yet that um, we weren't uh, ready to um, provide. Okay, so this this is what it would be, um, and provide feedback and guidance. Um, on community engagement strategies. Well, let me just change that to strategies. I wonder if you could delete strategy, just say community engagement. Yeah. I'm good with that. It's a little yeah. more clear, I think. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. So, um, Stephanie? Yes. <laughs> Oh no, I'm not voting. I'm just you had your hand up, or is that left? Oh, over? I I apologize. That's okay. that's meant to All be right. down. Okay, <laughs> you, you're the row caller, not me. <laughs> if we get to that point, okay, Janet. Oh, I was I'm fine with the language. I just I was it's a residual hand. I'm sorry. Okay, great. So, um, is there a suggestion that we need to take a vote, or is everybody comfortable with this? Um, Robert, you're not, or we don't need to take a vote. Okay, does anybody have any issues with the language as written here? Great, okay, let's adopt that as our language there uh, and, and move on uh, and um, super. <laughs> we're, we're all the deciders here. Okay. Um, okay, so let's move on then, Jan, and I think we're, we're using up a fair amount of time here, but that's this is important. Um, so let's move on to uh, what 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 will be a little bit later in our process uh, here, which is um, language back down down in this in this uh, activity uh, where it's really to re review uh, the outcome of this solar assessment um, and the uh, review of the consultant's solar assessment mapping and priority site recommendations. And then Janet uh, is suggesting that we add develop priority site map with supporting narrative report. So, Janet, do you want to comment on your? Sure, sure. So I think this is a situation where it'd be really helpful to look at the charge itself, because again, it's the question of, you know, we have these recommendations from the consultant. He's or she has done this. You know, like here's all the possible places for solar. Here's how much with our current technology that can be produced. Here are my recommendations for priority, you know, places to put solar. And then it comes to our committee, our group, and we then do what the charge says, which is um, identify and prioritize locations for possible slow solar development, and then provide a narrative, provide a, create a map and provide a narrative report. And I think what, um, I don't think this is a small issue or a sleight of hand. It's we're not asking the consultant to, to decide our community values. We're not asking the consultant to decide what the priority sites are for our community for solar. We're not, you were asked, the town council has asked our committee to take that input and make that recommendation to it. They'll have whatever the consultant says, but I think our committee has is is there to develop a priority map and justify it and then present it to town council and then um, also draft a bylaw that 
you know, it might be overlays that show the priority sites, but to send to town council our best recommendation. I completely understand that ECAC would have a different map. I completely understand that it will vary from, it could vary from the consultant's recommendations, but I just think we need to be really clear on what we're asked to do. And I think the charge itself is really clear. So my changes in language, I don't know if they're perfect, but are just putting what we're supposed to be doing, what the town council has asked us to do. And mm -hmm. so, it, but, it, you know, I, I I don't know if you, I would love to just put the charge language up or my memo, which is just pulling that language out. I don't know if we're resisting that because I don't know, the charge is super clear about what we're supposed to do. It has a list, it has sentences, it tells us what to do. Um, I'm not resisting that at all. In fact, I have it up, um, but um, Stephanie, before we go there. So again, I think I want to just veer away a little bit and focus on the process, which is that there is an RFP that's gone out for a consultant and they have been asked to do specific things and provide specific things. This is something that the town manager reviewed is directly involved in. The assessment is going to be produced and the final, um, the you know, the final product actually goes to the town manager for the assessment. Mm -hmm. So the town manager is going to be the one who that is that final product is sort of delivered to and then the town manager will deliver that to the council. I would say that this is another situation where I would tweak this language here a bit to more reflect what I think was the you know, the language in the charge, I think, may not be perfect, and I don't think it's clear cut because, as Dwayne pointed out, in the bottom section of it, it gets a little confusing and is a little, the language is a little different. So I can maybe look at this language a little bit, um, or I would change this, modify this language a little bit by saying, again, something like, um, let's see, review consultant solar assessment mapping priority site recommendations and provide input on the development of priority uh, priority siting. And I, I think with the supporting narrative report, again, that's not that's something the consultant is being asked to provide. So that's not coming from you all specifically, but you are providing input on those mm. those documents. And you are because again, ECAC is weighing in on this too. It's not just your committee. So they have a role as well. And I think the uh, the comment about the ECAC having a different map seems problematic to me. I don't think they are not gonna be different maps. <laughs> this is gonna be something that is a, a bigger process that involves everyone, everyone's input. So it's not just your committee. It's also the ECAC has input on this process too. So, I, I guess, you know, I would just tweak that language a bit. Great, let me, let me let's hear from Laura and welcome, welcome uh, from the road. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, like you've stopped. <laughs> I'm, in a, I'm in a safe space, um, <laughs> and I'm not driving. Um, so I think that, um, I guess what keeps coming up, and I think, Jenna, I've heard you say it a few times, and I think this is sort of the crux of the issue is that it sounds as though you think it's the solar working group's job to determine community priorities. When in reality, what, how I read this or how I view this is, it's entirely the consultant's job to extract as many diverse opinions as possible and to make sure we're getting an adequate pool of respondees um, for input on what the on what the priorities or the concerns or the values of the town is um, because you know I think that is you know and I'm I'm I think completely comfortable with the solicitation that the towns put out and the fact that we want this objective third party because you know everyone on this group we all come from different backgrounds and we all have our own sort of pool of friends and people we surround ourselves with, but it doesn't represent Amherst as a whole. Um, so, you know, I, I think without that third party's ability to go out and, you know, kind of cast a broad net, um, whatever we come up with as far as bylaws go, are, is not gonna be representative of Amherst as a whole. So that's all I have to say. 
Thanks, Laura. Um, let me just also, um, since I don't put my own hand up, and apologize for that, but um, just voice some of my uh, uncertainty about the language of the charge uh, as well, and, and sort of also trying to grapple with what we are actually at being asked to do. As I read the ch charge, um, and it says to uh, you know map and identify priority locations for um, for for solar ins installations. I mean, I I'm I don't know if I feel comfortable with like going on a map and saying here 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 is is where we we think solar should go uh, because uh, we're not the, <laughs> um, uh, especially if it's on private property or or anything like that. Um, so I, 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 I no, I'm not sure whether the charge really um, envisions us as a committee um, mapping, uh, literally map, putting on a map uh, specific parcels where we think solar has priority. Because um, I, I view sort of that's the role of the, of the zoning bylaw is to uh, not be specific to this parcel or that parcel, but to give the parameters under which solar can be um developed um and that in in terms of the language in the charge when it speaks about uh developing priorities for locations i read that as being more generic in terms of of uh you know we think the prior priority should be on this type of land and not that type of land on the built environment versus the not built environment um, and and, uh, and then leaving it up to the to the mappers to, uh, and how that interacts with with the mapping and our solar bylaw to then allow um, uh, developers to figure out where 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 um, it's permissible or reasonable to put solar. So I, I'm not I'm not exactly uh, clear. At least my reading of the charge is that it's not sort of like putting on a map specific parcels in Amherst where we think uh, uh, solar should be prioritized. Um, great. So let me, um, uh, I think it was Janet and then uh, Chris, and then we'll go back to Laura. So could we put the charge up? Because we're sort of, you know, talking about language that is, you know, we're, we're looking at a, a work plan that's trying to apply what we're asked to do in the charge. Um, so, so my understanding, so, you know, just to, before that comes up, when I looked at your organization's thing about the solar assessment, it was like the solar assessment is kind of a technical document. And then it had a whole process for working with the community to figure out where they wanted to cite things, you know, the community values, and then figuring out where they wanted to put solar. I think that's what our job is. And I base that just on reading the, um, the charge. Um, and if, you know, to address Stephanie's thing is we're going to have a consultant's map of, you know, where, where solar can be produced, you know, where are the best spots for it. And then ECAC is going to have input and then we're going to have input, but who decides the final map? I don't see that process anywhere in this charge. I just think we're a separate committee. I mean, I know you serve ECAC and Dwayne serves ECAC, but I think maybe it's time to sort of separate out what ECAC wants and will do in their recommendations from our committee. I feel like there's like a kind of strange blending and I don't know how we're gonna work with ECAC if we never meet with them or the consultant. I just, I just, you know, I'm kind of just at a loss. Can we go a little bit higher to the um, paragraph? Yeah, so, so I'm just maybe a little bit lower. So I'm, I'm to develop the solar bylaw, you know, we're writing a bylaw the SBWG will engage the community to ascertain community values. Um, I'm gonna skip the middle part for a second and identify and prioritize locations for possible solar development. So, I mean, that sentence has, you know, four things for us to do. And then there's more clarification and then we're supposed to provide reports, the bylaw provide a map with priorities. I don't see ECAC on that. I think that the solar assessment and the map provided by the consultant will be different from the priorities, because I think what we're gonna do is get the assessment, look at the community values, and then basically say, you know, this is a community that, you know, we're the book in the plow and we wanna protect the plow. You know, we prioritize farmland. So we've been buying it like hell for 40 years. So, you know, even though we'll be using farmlands for solar, maybe we'll do dual use. So we're going to be putting some 
attaching, you know, taking the, the information, looking at community values and putting it into a bylaw. Otherwise, if we're just writing a bylaw, why do we have to do anything else? You know, why, why are these, you know, I don't see any language in here that says work with ECAC and the consultant to set up a priority map. I don't, I don't, I, to me, it just seems very clear. We're developing a solar bylaw. We're engaging the community to learn their values. And then we identify criteria and standards to review and permit. We identify and prioritize the locations for development. I mean, I don't know how else to read those sentences, mostly because they're buttressed by the rest of the language in there. And, you know, that's my job. I'm an attorney. You know, I mean, I just, this is what this is telling us to do. And I don't see any language that is supporting the idea that we're not going to be doing a map with priorities. It's not like the priorities for the world. It's what we think are the priority places to put solar. It will differ from ECAC, I'm sure. And it will slightly, it will, this, the solar assessment is just telling us what can go where and how much you can get from it. All right, um, great. Let's hear from uh, from Chris and then we'll go with Dan. So um, I would just like to say that as part of developing the solar bylaw, I think you may need to create a map that says, here is where Amherst wants Here's where Amherst thinks it's okay to put solar. It may not be a priority map. It may just be a map showing here's where solar will be permitted in town. And that would include public property and it would include private property. It's just like it's a zoning map. It's an, a zoning overlay map. So, you know, just like we um, recently created a zone that allowed um a parking garage to be created on North Prospect Street. Well, it's got underlying zoning that allows certain things to happen, but the specific other thing that it allows to happen is a parking garage. And we do have overlay maps that allow other things to happen throughout town. So in my mind, I think you're going to have to end up with a map that can be adopted as part of the zoning bylaw as a change to the official zoning map that you link with the text of the zoning portion of this work that we're doing. And that, in my mind, is potentially where um, Amherst decides, do we want it here or here? And that's also, in my mind, separate from the technical work that the consultant is doing. The technical work that the consultant is doing is saying, where is it suitable to have these things? And then Amherst decides, where do we want to allow these things just like where do we want to allow apartment buildings where do we want to allow um you know uh, research um, and manufacturing where do we want to allow car dealerships it's that kind of a map that we in my mind will need to end up with as part of the zoning bylaw so i think that helps to kind of bring all of these things together and i think if the solar bylaw working group is working on the zoning bylaw, they will also be working on an overlay map that is going to be part of the official zoning map to show where does Amherst think it's okay to have these solar installations. So that's my my two cents. Great. Uh, Daniel? Um, yeah, I'm actually really glad that Chris went before me because my my um, question was really centered around what she just said was, um, and I didn't understand really how this map that we would be providing would fit in with and not step on the toes of other commissions in the town. Um, but it sounds to me like, Chris, you're envisioning this as a recommendation that we can provide to the zoning board and not necessarily um, a, an official map of permitted solar sites, correct? Mm -hmm. All right, good. Um, do do try to take your hands down if you're after you do it. Yeah. <laughs> Mine is up. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's go with Martha and then Stephanie. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, I I agree, I think, with, with what uh, Dwayne has has said uh, by now. And Stephanie, I was a little puzzled 
when you stated that, well, the consultant's report will go to the town manager who will then take it to the council. Uh, it seemed we weren't in the loop at all with, with that. And so I'm a little puzzled because I thought the, that the report would, would come to us for you know reaction to help us write ours. But I do think it's important that at the end, as, as I think Twain meant, that we do prepare our own document that uh, gives what we consider at least the general guidelines for the priorities of where solar should go, uh, and we may we may then in the in the actual bylaw have you know you know certain uh, definitions about you know the slope or the wetlands or the um, setbacks or this or that and so on to go with it, but. Uh, I just think that that it's very important that that we have the the independence and the and the priority to to be able to uh, see the uh, consultant's report and digest it and discuss it and then write our document with recommendations. So thank you. So, Dwayne, my ha my hand is up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's let's just go with Stephanie first, and then. Oh. I'll be quick, Laura. Um, Martha, I'm sorry. I was only responding to the final decision, not the, um, the absolutely. You, there is no question that you will have input on all of it. Um, absolutely. I, I'm just saying that the final, I think Janet kept asking who's the final decision maker, the final decision maker of, for the assessment. And again, these are sort of two separate things. I mean, I think that's why there's there's sort of this blending in a way that's confusing. And in some ways, they might actually even be two separate maps, really. There might be the, the solar assessment that the consultant does that maybe then is what, and this has been said all along, it's a tool for you to use that may be used to help develop that overlay. And I don't know if that helps clarify things, but... Um, but anyway, that that's just what I wanted to respond to you, Martha. That absolutely, there's no no question that you have input. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Laura. Yeah. So I think one of the things I just wanted to dispel, though, is that there's and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there's no way we'll ever be able to come up with a map. You know, the solar resource throughout Amherst is pretty consistent. It's not as though we're citing a wind facility where, you know, one spot it's great resource and then half a mile down the road it's not. Um, but but the as far as like, you know, I think I really appreciate Christine's comments about the zoning because I think that's tremendously important. But our map is in no way going to be able to reflect the economic differences of a parking canopy versus a rooftop versus the ground. I can't hear Laura. Yep, I think she um, froze up there. Let, let's get back to her if she if she because uh, I think she was making an important point but um, let me let me let me um let me uh, um I guess Chris if I might ask you a little bit more about your this, this issue this idea of the of the overlay and I'm, I guess I'm scratching my head a little bit in terms of what we are uh able to do or if not charged to do and I guess I'm I'm sort of thinking, um, okay, if 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 we with the consultants uh, have come up with a map that provides technical information about where solar um, for the for the uh, for the town is um, technically uh, able to be done uh, by you know scrubbing out all all the uh, issues where solar can't go and so forth. Um, I guess I'm having a hard time understanding. Um, what our role or the town's role is, and then and then doing something above above uh, beyond that of of, of then um, uh, identifying specific parcels through an overlay where we 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 as a as a town um, uh, um, will allow it to go because uh, I'm sort of thinking okay if I'm a landowner um, 
and and how that maps on to the to the to, or, or how that merges with the bylaw that we'll come up with because if i'm a a landowner uh and i have and i'm in this area of, of town where solar seems to be allowed uh by by all the rules and regulations and i can meet the bylaw that we come up with um then um why wouldn't i have the ability to put solar on my land uh, if it's if it's not in this in this um, overlay district, uh, are you asking me? Yeah, I guess, or just for clarification, I'm not I'm not putting you on the spot at all, but I'm just trying to um, understand. I, I do I'm trying to make the analogy with a parking lot, uh, but uh, but I'm not sure if I'm quite getting there. Um, and so, yes, yeah. so it could be that the overlay includes most of the town except for places that we want to exclude um, but it sounds like what you are going after with the site assessment and maybe I'm wrong about this but is some um, map that you um, may prioritize you may say we really want solar to go here and maybe it's okay if solar goes here but we don't want it to go here based on wildlife habitat, wetlands, steep slopes, whatever. And that would be the map that the solar consultant, the assessment consultant would come up with. But then normally when you have a zoning bylaw, you have some relation to a map that says, okay, well, here's, here's where this thing, whatever it is, can go. Um, and right now we have, I don't know, 12 or 14 different zoning districts mm -hmm. and things get plugged into those zoning districts. But if we wanted to allow something to be almost everywhere except for certain places, then we might just cover the whole town with, okay, overlay could be almost everywhere except for these certain places where we don't want it. And that can tie into the zoning bylaw and it actually becomes part of the zoning bylaw, the official zoning map. Maybe we won't need this map. I don't know what the solar site assessment is going to come up with, but I have the sense that it's not going to be um, a political map, that it's going to be a, where is it suitable for solar to go? And that may or may not be tied into where do we want solar to go? And the zoning map would put it into the category of where do we want solar to go or where do we think it would be okay? So I'm presenting that as a possibility. I'm not saying we have to go in that direction, but in my mind, this process leads to that type of map that then becomes part of the zoning bylaw. So that's that's what I'm talking about. All right, great. And I, I think I'm just reflecting on that from the map you showed us before. Um, uh, you know, we obviously have the built environment where solar is, is probably reasonable to go, uh, maybe a few exceptions, uh, but then it actually turned out that there was actually a very uh, limited amount of Amherst that is likely to pass all the um, uh, requirements um, of, uh, you know, not, not uh, wetlands, not endangered species, not uh, uh, water recharge areas and, 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 and so forth. Uh, and so that we're probably sort of on the other, other spectrum of it's fairly limited um, of where solar can technically go uh, in terms of meeting rules and regulations. Um, and, um, uh, and, and uh, it's just my, my sense of where we might come out. Um, okay, let me, let me um, and thanks for that, Chris. Uh, uh, Laura, are you um, back and able to finish yeah, up I, your comment? I think so. Can, okay. can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. What I was trying to say is that um, there's no way we will be able to come up with a map that can, my initial point was the solar resource throughout Amherst is basically consistent. It's not different from one spot to another, um, but there's no way we're gonna be able to say, oh, here it makes good sense because you know every time you do an inter interconnection study to the utility, you know that's a study that the utility does that comes up with costs which determines the economic viability of a project. So there's a lot of things that we're not going to be able to do as part of this group. So we might say, wow, we really want solar here on this public piece of land. And then maybe we even solicit responses, but the interconnection is too much and the site cannot support it. 
or we love parking canopies or rooftops, oftentimes the economics for those types of designs mm -hmm. can be very cost prohibitive based on the interconnection. So I guess, you know, I think we are just by nature limited, of, you know, we can make suggestions, but you know, I, I guess my sort of overarching concern is I don't want to have us come up with a map because when we come up with a, a, a map, um, depending upon how limiting it is, it's basically preventing solar in a lot of areas. It's just it's just um, it's actually contrary to what we're what we're trying to do here. Um, so I, I just want us to be cognizant of that. There's only so much we can we can do here. Um, because we might say a site is great from wetlands, endangered species, et cetera, but it might just not make sense um, from an economic perspective, so. Great, let me, let me um, in the interest of time, let me uh, go to Janet and then Dan, and then I wanna sort of wrap this up so that we have um, a little bit of time to um, uh, talk briefly about the other agenda items. So I, I think maybe what, what will get us out of the, the log jam is two things. Like one of them is this fantastic report called Conducting a Solar Resource and Infra Infrastructure Assessment, which is put out by your group. And it talks about like how tech, it's like all the technical issues um, that will be provided, including interconnection and everything like that. And so yeah. I think, you know, and, you know, fortunately, you don't have to read the whole, it's very long, but you can just read the summaries. And then, so it's, it's basically saying, here's this technical report. And, you know, like, you know, I live next to acres and acres of protected land. Arguably, you should put solar in it because it's just kind of a crummy right now hayfield. But because it's been bought under a certain state program, there's no solar allowed there. And so that should be in the assessment. And so we might wind up you know, we're really bickering over like 40 acres or something, but, you know, we will bicker and we should, that's, that's the job of our committee, right? To say, you know, I think this land should be protected. No, I think this is fantastic for solar because we're so limited. Um, or I wish, you know, Eversource had a connection point here, but they don't. And so, but I think that if we looked at your organization's guide, because there's a technical piece, which I think what Chris is referring to, and then there's a community process laid out there. So I don't have to be an expert in that. And then RP, but I really do think we need to know what we have to decide and what we have to deliver. And I do think there is some ambiguity in the language of the charge, but I think it's really clear. It's like the town council is asking us, seven people brought together by circumstance to say, hey, this is what we think the priority map is given these values that we heard given, you know, whatever, you know, the fact that we have a lot of protected land. I think a lot of solar capable stuff is gonna be on the UMass campus and, you know, even Hampshire College, you know, based on who has open fields that aren't under, you know, various things. So I think, but I, you know, I think we should look at this guide, look at this process and then look at our assessment and our charge and just figure, okay, I get it here's what we have to decide. And I think we're just gonna have some hard conversations, but we'll hopefully base it on, I, I'm dying to know the economics of all this. I, that's one of my big hopes for the future. Great, thanks. Um, let's go to Dan and then I, 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 I propose some way to wrap this up. <laughs> so I mean, the way I'm reading the charge right now is that under no uncertain terms, we are, we are charged with creating this map. Um, but it sounds to me like a lot of the folks um, are opposed to creating the map um, with some with some pretty valid reasons as well. Um, would it make sense to revise a charge? Let me let me um, take that as a, a prompt for. <laughs> What, what I think maybe uh, to try to wrap this up, uh, because I think um, in one way we, we've we've accomplished a lot uh, in our conversation um, by by uh, um, fr friendly friendly but frank conversation, uh, but also quite practically um, uh, we we did decide on the. Um, uh, sort of what our role is and activity will be with regard to the input to the consultant yeah uh, and 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 yeah. so forth and and that's I, I think really helpful because that comes first 
Mm -hmm. um, not, not to say we, 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 we don't wanna know what we're doing at the end, but the rest of this comes quite a few months from now. Uh, so what I would suggest that we do is that we, um, uh, uh, as we already have, I'm not going to ask again. Uh, we've agreed to the to the activity with regard to the input uh, in in sort of the third third. What was the third uh, activity? The other ones I think um, still remain a little bit. Uh, I think we all learned a lot today about different perspectives and ways to read the charge, uh, whether we need to um, uh, ask Stephanie to work with the town to amend the charge or whether we can agreed to interpret the charge in, in, in certain ways. And, and uh, what I would suggest is that we um, not the, belabor the issue uh, too much longer, but we come back and, and try to make decisions on these other uh, issues with regard to the, our role on the mapping um, and the prioritization uh, and, and how that interacts with the consultant who's doing this mapping uh, as uh, their portion of the mapping. And we um, take that up. We all reflect on this conversation and take that up as an act as a um, discussion at our next meeting. Um, if that sounds okay with everybody. Um, but be prepared to sort of, you know, it is my one of my old bosses used to say is, is uh, choose and move. Let's choo choose our choose what we want to do and move forward. Um, and so uh, we'll do that. But then um, uh, so let's let's do that, and then um, looking at the um, other agenda items, which which we won't have time to do today, um, uh, because I want to get to public input as well. Um, is that importantly, um, and I think it reflects some of the the conversation we we we've had. Uh, we do have the opportunity uh, working with Stephanie and Chris uh, and myself um, have have. Um, and I think as a working group, previous time we decided that we would want to move forward with um, some questions with regard to um, what can be in a in a bylaw and how to think about the bylaw and legal aspects associated with it. We have developed a line of of questioning for the legal legal counsel uh, for the town KP law uh, and. Um, uh, particularly with Stephanie and Chris's input and, and, and some review and input from myself, we, de we developed an initial, an initial list of questions that we'd like to um, get re some responses to from the uh, legal counsel. Um, and um, what, we, what we are proposing um, is that we as a working group um, reflect on the, this um, initial set of questioning uh, but then um, have the opportunity for us as a working group and uh, individually and then together uh, to um, add, either amend uh, or add uh, to this list. Um, and that we would then um, have that, uh, and I think it would be helpful. And, and I'll, I'll want Stephanie and Krista to, to uh, weigh in on this, but I think even though we didn't have time to look at the initial set of questioning, uh, if if uh, folks could use the, uh, the the two weeks until the next meeting uh, to reflect on that and send additional questions um, that you think would be worthwhile to add to this list uh, to um, not to the whole group, uh, but to Stephanie or, or to or Stephanie, Chris and myself, uh, we can then prepare for distribution as an agenda item next time, uh, a comprehensive list of everything uh, that's been suggested and then work as an agenda item next meeting to parse through that and, and deliberate, maybe combine some questions uh, and so forth um, uh, uh, to, to, to come out with a, a list that we would then move forward to, uh, to the uh, legal counsel. Um, let me ask Chris and, and Stephanie if that seems in line with your with your thinking or other suggestions. It does. And I would encourage people to think of this as we're asking KP law to guide us so that we don't get into trouble with the courts. We're asking mm -hmm. them to let us know what are the limits of what we can do so that when we, you know, somewhere down the road, we're not going to get into a lawsuit or an appeal. Lawsuits and appeals always happen, but we try to narrow down the opportunities for those so that's the, and, that's and, what we're trying to do great yes. and i would just add to that that um, even though even though some of these questions it seems like 
other other uh, uh, bylaws that we've looked at include some of these issues. Um, right. I think the town would still like to have legal opinion on whether uh, these things are, are likely to pass muster with regard to legal legal um, um, legal suits. Yes, yeah, Stephanie. I just wanted to point out that I'll actually uh, I'm not available on the 14th, which okay. is two weeks from today. Um, I think you all should do what you need to do, but um, just in terms of the logistics of posting the meeting and getting the packets together and posting the material on the website. Um, you know, I, I won't, I won't be available to do that for that week. So I don't know if you did it the following week, I probably could do everything ahead of time. Gotcha. Okay. Well, let's... Are you out all week or uh, just the Wednesday out all week? I'm out all week. Yeah. Okay. So that week, um, well, let's, let with any questions about the legal um, about the questioning for uh, the legal counsels and whether people can do that um, and, and send their ideas to to us. Um, great. Okay, so let's let's um, um, with that in mind, um, I'm wondering if we might look at if we can schedule the next meeting in real time here um, and whether. Um, because I, I think it would be problematic without Stephanie at the meeting, but and and also to to post the meeting and so forth. Um, and I would wonder whether the following week, um, um, and I apologize, I have a conflict. The following week on the twenty first at this time, but could do it on Thursday, for example, or Tuesday, or a little bit later, starting at two, for example. Uh, but um, Martha, did you have a thought? Uh, I just wondered, possibly, I mean, if we want to kind of get going on some of these things, whether Friday the 9th, which is a week and a half from now, is a possibility, just tossing it out. I'm sorry, I'm not, so I'm, I'm gone from the 7th to the 15th. Ah, okay. <laughs> I apologize. This is a very rare trip so, I'm taking with my daughters. Yeah. Are so you I going apologize. camping? No, not so, this time. Um, <laughs> so Duane, why don't we look toward that Thursday of, the, of that week um, that you mentioned? I'm out Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Yeah. Okay, how does Thursday? What Thursday day? the 22nd. Um, what time did we start today? Is it noon? Um, at noon, noon to one thirty. Mm -hmm. We usually go to oh. two. Two. Sorry, noon to two. It's sorry. To two. I'm I'm not available at that time. Would you be available a little bit later that day, like two to four? Uh, I'm a I'm in meetings from twelve to four, so I can I can do four. <laughs> uh, four. So can I? Yeah. <laughs> but, four. Um, yep. How about it's how a about, long day for you though? Yeah. Four to six. Yeah. yeah. How about well, we could do four to six, but that interferes with uh, family issues. Um, but how about how about Friday, the twenty third? That works. Yeah. Yeah. Noon. Noon to two. Noon to two. Yeah. I can do that. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Noon okay. to two. <laughs> Thank you all. Goodbye. Thank you. And okay. enjoy your vacation. Yeah. Thanks all. Yeah. But before we uh, before oh, we uh, sign off, yeah. um, um, we'll need a motion to adjourn. I th I think. But also, I do want to. I I'm available um, to hang in there a little bit longer. Hey, and, hey and Dwayne. Able, yes. What about public public comments? Well, exactly. I was, just uh, was um was uh, I'm I'm able to hang hang yeah. in there. Um, and everybody else who can uh, appreciate that, but I wouldn't mind um, if we can open it up to public comment um, and, and see what what um, what we might hear. But if you need to go, obviously uh, sign off. Uh, and it's, uh, Stephanie, are you in charge yes. of that process? Yeah. If if anyone if, has from the public has any comment, please digitally raise your hand, electronically raise your hand, and I'll acknowledge you. I'm sorry. <laughs> not me, not me. 
Eric Bachrock. I've allowed you to speak, so you're unmuted. Go ahead. Eric, you have feedback. <laughs> thank you, and, and thank you for your work on the, on this very important uh, topic of um, uh, the solar bylaw development. I'd like to remind um, this committee that the impetus for and the genesis on the development of a solar bylaw came from the community. It was the community that brought the fact that Amherst had no solar bylaw to an unaware town council. It was the community that unearthed the fact that Amherst was using the special permitting process to permit large scale solar, unguided by any regulatory process beyond the special permit. As I support a comprehensive and deep community dialogue managed by the consultant, I also support dialogue between the Solar Bylaw Working Group and the consultant designing the community assessment at the front end of the larger community dialogue. After all, it was the Solar Bylaw Working Group that was created to manage the development of a solar, of, the, of the creation of a solar bylaw and its various and several different component stages. So I would urge you to consider active active involvement in um, the creation of a um, uh, pro the process and the, the questions between the community and and the consultant. And I also would like to know how many participants from the community are on the, the call today. This, if you can uh, let us know. I can answer that quickly, Duane. There were seven total, there are five now. Thank you very much. Great. Anybody else from the public, if they could raise their hand digitally or electronically? All right. I don't see any additional um, public comment, but we uh, definitely appreciate people listening in and, and Eric for that comment. Um, with that, um, I'd like to um, make a mo uh, hear a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Janet. And a second on that? Second. second. All right. <laughs> okay. That's a tie between Robert and Laura. Uh, okay. Uh, do we need a roll call for that? No, no. I think okay. you can. Anybody, uh, yeah. All in favor? All, anybody opposed? <laughs> Great. <laughs> all right. Uh, so uh, I, I declare this meeting adjourned and thank you, everybody, thank for, you. for a really, really good conversation today. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye. Thanks, all. Bye. Bye.